Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and this is going to be a quick video about uh, some interesting behavior with AVX instructions on 12th gen uh, Intel CPUs. So here we have, uh, well, I'm on the MSI Z690 Unify X motherboard right now. Um, it's on a BIOS, which allows enabling AVX 512 instructions if we go into CPU Z right now. Um, I think it should, and also I think my CPU Z is kind of outdated, but. Uh, yeah, you can see that we have, you know, AVX, AVX2, AVX 512F uh, instructions over there. So the thing is, in order to be able to enable AVX 512, you have to disable the e-cores. Uh, that varies based on what motherboard you have, but every motherboard I've used has a way to turn the e-cores off. So, um, yeah, I admit it, I've every motherboard like I've seen people disable e-cores on ASRock boards I've not done it on an ASRock board myself because I don't have any ASRock motherboards um but uh yeah on all the mother like it is possible to turn off the e-cores on every motherboard um and when you do that on some BIOSes you'll get the option to uh, well some BIOSes will automatically enable AVX 512 if you turn off the e-cores and on some BIOSes you'll get the option to enable AVX 512 if you disable the e-cores uh, it is worth noting that Intel is currently sort of trying to remove AVX 512 support from 12th gen CPUs, as in uh, the newer microcodes actually don't allow the re-enabling of AVX 512 instructions if you disable the e-cores. Um, and most, some motherboard manufacturers have workarounds for that, like the Unify X basically... The, the BIOS that I'm using right now actually has two different microcodes available to it. So I can use a AVX 512 compatible, like AVX 512 microcode or a uh, newer microcode that doesn't have AVX 512. Um, anyway, let's take a look at the actual interesting uh, behavior. We're not going to talk about, not going to look at the performance because the simple, like the short version of it is, is that AVX 512 for the vast majority of workloads that can take advantage that make use of AVX 512 instructions it just provides a uh, speed up there are some anomalies where you might see this performance actually come down a bit which is workloads that are like very memory bound um for the ma vast majority of workloads having if they support AVX 512 acceleration enabling AVX 512 acceleration makes them way faster um so basically, if you have a motherboard that supports this feature, and if you're turning off the e-cores, you should turn on AVX 512 support. Now, uh, it does cause one sort of annoying uh, thing when it comes to stress testing, which is that if we run Prime95 here with AVX 512 enabled, and this is small FFTs, right? The CPU pulls 260 watts, which is not much, okay? <laughs> like, that's... It's not much, and the CPU is also consequently not running very hot. Uh, this is admittedly on a custom loop with liquid metal on top of the CPU's IHS, so uh, the thermal transfer is quite good. But um, yeah, so we're, we're pulling 260 watts with AVX 512 instructions. Now, if we stop Prime95 and switch it over to using AVX 256 instructions in small FFTs, uh, you'll notice that the power consumption actually ends up being significantly higher than when using AVX 512. And that's the sort of weird AVX behavior that I wanted to show you in this video, because if you're stress testing a 12th gen CPU, uh, you probably want to stress test it with AVX 256 instructions, not AVX 512 instructions, because if, like, if you open some program that's a bit older and supports AVX 256 acceleration but not 512 acceleration, it might end up crashing even though all of your like AVX 512 based uh, stress tests are fine because um, the AVX 256 instructions for some reason run hotter, which doesn't like, it doesn't make a ton of sense to me because um, uh, yeah, it's not like AVX 512 causes a performance regression. Like if you run Y Cruncher with AVX 512 on, it's way faster and it gets less hot than if you run it with AVX 512 off. So yeah, it's just like super weird because it, it, the only other CPUs where I've really paid a lot of attention to AVX 512 was Skylake X and on Skylake X CPUs, <laughs> AVX 512 is absolutely infernal. Um, like it's insane. Like you get CPU, you, you can have like a eight core CPU pull over 
well over 300 watts at like 4 gigahertz. It's insanity what AVX 512 does to uh, Skylake X CPUs, but for whatever reason, Alder Lake CPUs are actually hottest when running AVX 256 instructions. So if you're stress testing uh, your CPU, um, this is something to keep in mind that, you know, if you're going to be doing a max heat load stress test, you want to do it with AVX 256, not 512, because 512 runs less hot, and so... Uh, if, like, you basically would potentially avoid a scenario that might actually cause a crash in regular usage. Um, so, yeah, anyway. And then also, I guess, for com like, since we're already here, just for comparison, let's see what, what this looks like if we disable AVX2. Um, so that only pulls 200... Wait, seriously? That only pulls 200 watts? Is it actually running? Okay, yeah, that's actually running on all of the cores to 100%, and that, that doesn't pull anything, so the CPU is completely cold. Um, and if we stop that, okay, I want to know what happens if you turn off all the acceleration. There we go. Oh, wait, I'm running, I'm not running small FFTs. That's going to be part of it. Torture test, small FFTs. Okay, so I just, like, we're just going to redo that. Okay, yeah, so it sits at around two. okay, now that's 270. Yeah, so that's about the same as AVX uh, 512. Um, and now we're going to switch it over to small FFTs, but everything disabled. And that makes a small difference. Yeah, so that drops us down to like two, 240 watts. So, yeah, anyway, that's, um, that's basically all I wanted to show you in this video is just, uh, you know, uh, AVX 512 on 12th gen CPUs um, boosts performance and runs less hot, um, at least in most workloads. There are a few anomalies, but yeah, for a lot of workloads, AVX 512 gives you a performance increase and reduces your operating temperatures, which is super weird because on past Intel CPUs, it did the exact, well, it increased your performance, but it didn't lower the temperatures. It did the exact opposite to the temperatures, so, um, and the power consumption. So anyway, uh, that's it for this video. Hopefully it's somewhat useful and uh, thanks for watching. And also this should explain why um, when I do stress testing on 12th gen chips, I do it with AVX uh, 256. So without, like I disable 512 for stress testing because if you stress test with 512, like I said, there's the potential that you might open some application that uses AVX 256 for like file, file compression or decompression or video encoding or something. And while your AVX 512 accelerated stuff is perfectly sta stable, the AVX 256 uh, stuff might not be because it's going to run hotter. Now, I don't think, like, with Prime 95, there's a decent chance that, like, AVX 512 Prime 95 is still hotter than the vast majority of AVX 256 accelerated software anyway, so it might not really be much of a concern. But I'd say if you want, like, 100% reliability, you definitely want to test with AVX 256 as well as 512 in Prime 95. Um, yeah, though I can't imagine that 512 would crash if 256 doesn't, just because the CPU's stability is, like, especially with 12th gen, the stability of these CPUs is super dependent on the operating temperature. So, you know, if the power consumption drops by 40 watts, like, that's, that's a big difference to the stability. Um, Anyway, let's try end this video before it goes over 10 minutes so I don't look like I'm trying to stretch it out on purpose. So, yeah, thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below if you'd like to support what I do here with Actually Hardcore Overclocking. I have a Patreon. There's a link to that down in the description below. There's also the AHOC Teespring store where you can pick up shirts, stickers, posters, you know, the usual YouTuber merch. Both Patreon and Teespring help out immensely with running the channel, so uh, it'd be much appreciated if you'd check them out. And that's it for the video, so thank you for watching, and goodbye!